Samsung announced the Watch 6 and the Watch 6 Classic at the same time as the Z Fold 5 and the Z Flip 5 in Korea. One of the biggest things that I appreciate here is that we get the best of Samsung and the best of Google in a wearable that allows us to get the assistant, the application downloads, and all the functions that we want to be able to do with Wear OS on a wearable that works great with our devices. I've been using it, of course, with the Z Fold 5, one of my favorite devices this year, and I want to share with you guys my review after using it for over a month. This is TK and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic Edition. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe to make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos for you on the channel. The Watch Classic does come in a couple of sizes. Obviously there's a large and a small one, but one of the other things that we should know is that it also comes in an LTE format or essentially a connected version of it. Now that obviously can be used directly with your carrier. AT&T does provide one. And of course, at the same time that I've got my tablet, the Tab S9 Plus connected, I also got the Watch 6 Classic uh, that also has LTE options. Now, one thing I will probably say is that some of the specifications we're going to talk about today kind of marry over from both devices. So they're really not much difference other than the radio capability, but otherwise it's going to be pretty much the same experience. The Watch 6 Classic is definitely the one that really works very nicely. And again, that's one of the reasons why I like is the fact that we actually have the actual physical crown now, not a just digital format of it. The Watch 5 Pro still, although from last year, will be receiving most of the features that we got in here. But overall, this is going to be the best experience at, at least in 2023. As far as what we got with the watch, we get the watch itself. We get, uh, there is an additional band. There was a promotion at the time when I was getting this watch. The other thing, of course, here is we have the charger. This is a magnetic charger. It is a USB-C type uh, charger. So if this is going to be something you can connect to your PC, Otherwise, it's pretty much straightforward. You can charge it straight from here, or one of the other things we can do is also use the reverse wireless charging on our smartphone in case we want to be able to top it off if the battery ever dies on us. As far as the configuration, what we get in here, we have obviously two button configurations on the right side. We have a microphone, a speakerphone, so we can receive and make calls. Again, the bands are replaceable. They're pretty much easy to put in. This is a 20 millimeter band here. Uh, removing it and putting it on is very simple. You just push the button and then you're able to remove it. It's pretty, pretty nice. This is a fabric one that they offered. Uh, the one that comes in the box is gonna be more something like this. This is the design that actually comes straight in the box and it comes pre-attached. If you need something a little bit smaller, again, you can pick up additional one. Uh, and yes, I do have two because I actually did purchase one before I knew I was going to get one for review. And this one, unfortunately, is a loaner. So this, at the end of the day, once we're able to, when we're done, I'm going to talk to you about how I'm going to basically transfer my data from here to this watch and still be able to use it. Now, as you see here, we have a beautiful 1.5 inch 40 by 40 display. We have two gigs of RAM, 425 milliampere battery built into this. We have a microphone. And of course, uh, let's go ahead and bring this in here. We have uh, obviously the sensors on the bottom that gives us access to be able to check out and as you can see here it has five atmosphere gps and this model that i have here as you can see it says lte so sapphire crystal for protection a 47 millimeter design there's two different ones available of course and last but not least of course all the sensors and if you want to be able to remove or put back the actual uh, uh yeah, I would say basically the uh, actual uh, bands. It's pretty straightforward. You push the button. There's no wire. There's no stick that comes out anymore. You basically push the button, put it in, and then from there, as you can see, it's easy. It's very nice. And again, there are additional options that you're able to pick up. The one at the time when I purchased the watch, uh, at least when I picked up mine, they also included an additional band for free. So this is a fabric band, a wooden band that you can basically use. And of course, it gives you a different feel to it. But overall, they'll work pretty much the same. Uh, we have, again, two button configurations on the right side, a digital crown or not a digital, but like a spinning crown here that we're able to use to interface with the UI. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And of course, on the left side, as you can see, everything looks really nice and very clean. And all the sensors that we have are inside here. The LTE model, again, will have LTE connectivity. And then the standard one will be just the Wi-Fi connection. The complication, or at least the main uh, watch face that I have right now, just pretty much gives me all my information. It does have a timeout on it. It also does support always on display, but I will say that always on display does kill the battery very quickly. One of the reasons why I decided to turn it off is that I am actually able to get up almost about three days worth of usage out of this with exercise and many, many notifications. So it allows me to actually have a much better battery life. And of course, um, everything that we get in here, of course, you know, rise to wake and all of those are going to be working very nice. On the left side, we have all of our notifications. This comes straight from the smartphone and you're also able to dismiss them. On the right side, you have your widgets for the most part and you're able to go in there and interact. You notice today I have around 3,100 steps already. Um, you're obviously able to turn on exercise modes here, uh, body composition, you'd be able to measure those uh, information, sleep tracking, of course, uh, weather, all that information, your calendar. ECG tracking is available and I will talk a little bit more as well when we start looking at the app. 
Uh, of course, blood pressure, this is something that's built in, stress level measurement, and of course, oxygen uh, saturation. And last but not least is you're able to add additional ones straight from the watch if they're already preloaded and you can actually add them here. Or you can go straight on the watch or the phone and actually customize all of those things from there. Swiping up from the bottom gets us directly into the app drawer. And this is where you're able to use the crown to be able to scroll down and see all of the different applications that are installed. One of the things I love about this is the ability of actually controlling our device. I'm able to actually launch a camera application here. I'll go ahead and say allow. And at this point, it'll load a camera preview. As you can see here, it's pro showing the preview straight from the camera on my Z Fold 5. And of course, we're able to go back by hitting the, uh, the button here. Now, there is a couple of options here. If I double press the, uh, the right button here, it takes me to the recent app. Those are configurable. If I press and hold, this is what's the weather like today. It's going to give me the weather and that gives me access directly to the Google Assistant. Uh, out of the box, though, this is pre-configured to be the Bixby Assistant. If this is not something that you like, you can switch it over to the Google Assistant very easily and customize it on your device. Now, on the bottom right, we also have the ability of customizing this button. But if I press and hold, it, it's going to open up the Samsung Pay or this is a Samsung wallet and you're able to customize it directly on your device. If you install or you're using this with a non-Samsung device, you will need to download a few applications on top of the main application, which is the Wear app for Samsung, uh, to be able to manage and get everything set up correctly. As far as the application, it's pretty much the standard application we've used in the past. You have access to the information on the phone exactly as it shows up on the watch. You'll notice right there, I can show the basically the battery percentage, uh, how many days of, of time left that it has. So basically at about 39%, it should last me about a day and 41 minutes. So it should definitely carry me through tomorrow all the way to tomorrow evening. There's a little bit of a tip section here. There's uh, watch faces here that you're able to customize and of course pick from. Those are the preloaded ones. And of course you can download additional ones, all of the different complications and everything. Uh, also one a nice fact, it does support Facer if you'd like to customize it using there. Application screen, this is the kind of like the little scroll option that we saw there. Of course, if you need something else, you could definitely download additional apps from there. The tiles are those little circle apps that we saw in there. And as, you, as we were going through them, we can go in and add additional ones. There's additional tiles like here, the cardiogram, uh, there's clock faces, there's obviously timers, uh, contacts if you want to be able to shortcut calling people, favorite tasks, uh, voice recorder, a whole bunch of different ones, again, all customized. And you can add, I think, up to 10 complications at the same time. So the tiles are limited by a certain number. Quick panel, that's the toggle on the top part of the watch. So if I wouldn't click that here, swipe down from the top. You'll notice that this now matches what we have there. And if I swipe to the right, those are exactly the ones that we see there. So here you can customize what you have, the order that you have them, and of course, add or the re remove certain things from there. It works really, really nice. So for the most part, I'm only missing Bluetooth, uh, mobile data, of course, NFC and touch uh, sensitivity. Mobile data, just keep in mind, will only be available on the LTE model. And if you do pick up the LTE model, and let's say you wanna use it as, an, as a Wi-Fi only for some areas, let's say you don't have connection, one thing to mention is that you can turn off the LTE radio and keep it so that it does not use that. But otherwise, you're pretty much set. These are primarily the biggest thing that you need to do. Under watch settings, pretty much just additional options in here. There's modes as far as sync uh, modes with the phone. You can go in there, customize all the information that actually gets synced there. Notifications, pretty much straightforward. You can say mute notifications on the phone when it goes to the watch. You can also customize which notifications go in and how they show up on your phone. App notifications, pretty much straightforward. You can either customize it like I have, or you can just select the option that says uh, just show everything and all the notifications that show up on your phone will show up directly on the actual watch. And if you dismiss them on the watch, it will dismiss them there. Sound and vibration customization there. You can go in there, customize the display. And of course we do have always on display, raise to wake, and of course touch screen to wake. I currently have it just raise to wake and of course touch, touch to screen uh, to wake is turned off, but turn on the bezel or the crown, it works really nice. Uh, show control media when you're listening to music, time out of the display, everything that you want. Again, customizable under the display section. Uh, sound vibration, pretty much the same. You can turn on, set it up to be either regular sound or you keep it on vibrate mode and customize the different experiences in here. And even customize your own ringtone if you want to. It does integrate with the Samsung Health application, so you can turn that on and it'll actually check the heart rate and the frequency of it, uh, predict period. Uh, this is obviously, <laughs> this is something obviously will apply for, for ladies, if, of course, if you're gonna be checking some of that information. Uh, otherwise, you can go in there, customize it. The wallet, of course, you can turn that on if you wanna use that. Safety and emergency, accounts and backup, 
that's one of the really nice things I like about this function is because this is enabled with the new features that we have with Wear OS 4. I can actually go straight into settings and that's the ability of actually transferring this watch from one device to the other without ever having to reset it or even put it on a charger. This is one of the new benefits that we get in here. And I really enjoy this because at this point is let's say I want to switch phones and I don't want to lose all the data that I have here. All the data stays the same and I just transfer my watch to a new phone connected to the Wear app, obviously from Samsung and all the information that I have on the watch connected to the cloud or backed up on the cloud just works absolutely fantastic the same way. Advanced features pretty much here, the double press, press and hold, short press, and of course, uh, status indicators, answering calls, dismissing, these are all the options that you're able to do. You can customize all the options in there. Battery and, uh, and device care, you can go in there, see how the battery is doing, and of course, run some diagnostics if you want to. Now, managed content is really nice. We have 16 gigs of internal storage built into this watch, and we're able to add additional things to it, either images or even music, if you wanna use this as a music player when you go outside, uh, disconnect it from the phone, connect to LTE. You can either stream music using user YouTube music or even uh, Amazon or you can actually store music in here and pair your favorite buds to it and of course enjoy content directly because if you go directly into the applications you'll scroll down a little bit there is a built-in music application that enables us to actually play songs directly in here control the volume do everything that we want and of course everything stays the same and it runs really nice in here so again a lot of options and this is again when I said the best of Samsung and the best of Google in one device one thing I will say though, if you are going to activate it and connect it to, uh, to a say, service, this will be where you set it up under mobile plans and it will directly try to figure out what is the connection that's running on your phone and it'll try to connect it if you have a plan already existent. If you don't, you don't want to turn that on or try to activate it, I recommend you calling your carrier and activating the service there. Last but not least, uh, of course, we have the ability of turning on the, the text tech, the, the style, the keyboard, the languages, all the different things, orientation, setup, everything, accessibility, watch software update. There's a few that I received since I had the watch, and I think I pushed one last night, if I'm not mistaken, that did uh, bring up the security update on this as well. So Samsung's definitely staying on top of it. We'll let it go ahead and finish here, checking for updates. And as you see there, June 1st, 2023 is the latest update that we have in here, and there is no additional uh, updates to the watch at this point. Under about, that just takes us into the about information on this. So that pretty much kind of gets everything. Find my watch in case you misplace it, tips as far as the usage. And it takes us straight into the Google Play Store to be able to download additional application, Amazon Music, AccuWeather, all the different things. Again, WhatsApp is supported natively, YouTube Music is supported, Spotify, of course, uh, Pocket FM, all the different things. All the apps here that are shown should be compatible with your watch. Now, the next app I wanted to talk to you guys about is Samsung Health, because this is the main way for you to be able to track all your information on this watch. So overall, you'll notice here, we can go into the main complication. You can see the history of the information. I can go ahead and show you guys. Again, I've been using it for that long, ever since I received it back before, I think in, at the end of August, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you can see all the information, the steps, the, uh, the runs, everything that you did. Like yesterday was a really good day for me, almost 10,000 there, 81 minutes of activity, the calories that I burned. We can go in there and change the different exercise modes, the foods, if you want to be able to log it. I use a different app for that one. But again, the last uh, heart rate measurement that I have, sleep tracking, stress tra tracking, body composition. Of course, uh, si uh, again, if you're trying, if you're tracking your cycle, this would be basically where you're doing it. Water intake, blood oxygen, and of course, ECG measurement. Now, one of the things that they do very well here, and this is very similar to what we get from Fitbit, is that ability of basically competing with friends and other people that you know. I have two friends that are in there. We don't really compete much, but you're able to customize and set up different options in there. As you see there, my buddy uh, Joshua Bain in here, still from way in the day when we first signed up. Fitness tracking, you can go in there, some additional classes that you're able to use and customize. And this is one of the things they brought in, uh, I think about a year or so ago, to help us get and stay in, in shape. So you don't have to rely on services too much. You can basically run it. And of course, either broadcast it directly to a TV over Wi-Fi, and get the experience very nicely. And last but not least, you're able to log in and see the achievements that you have, the badges and everything that you've done. And of course, uh, weekly summaries and everything. Pretty much a straightforward experience. Last but not least is the Samsung Health ECG Tracker. This is a separate app, but once you have it installed, it does actually link directly in here. So if I click it in, it takes me back to it and you're able to get all the information from the watch and of course, save it up to the cloud. Now the watch connects to the phone primarily over Bluetooth. And even though it's an LTE watch, it does connect directly there. Now, if you have it set up with your carrier for LTE connectivity, one of the really nice things about it is they're also able to, put, well, they do something called a, like almost like a notification forwarding. As long as both the devices are connected to the same Samsung account, you can actually pair your notification from your phone to the watch, even though you're not at the same location and you're connected over LTE. Some carriers, if you don't have that service or it doesn't work directly with it, they also offer this, so you may want to check that with yours. 
But as far as what I've had here, as far as LTE connectivity, there's no issues. This is typical. You do, you need to have a separate plan for that. That is not included with your, your main line. It doesn't share that, but it is an add-on to your main line. Um, connectivity, at least with T-Mobile or even with AT&T. Again, this is an AT&T connected one. It's pretty much a straightforward thing. As the moment you disconnect from Bluetooth, if you have LTE or mobile data on auto, it automatically jumps over to that connection, but it defaults back to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi whenever they're available since we also have Wi-Fi connectivity. So let's say I'm on the other side of the house where Bluetooth is not re reaching it, it's gonna default to Wi-Fi, which is the second step. LTE only becomes an option when you leave the location and you no longer are within the Wi-Fi confines or even within the area where Bluetooth will work. And again, all of the stuff that you'd expect works great. Uh, GPS tracking, LTE connectivity works really nice. The, one, the main thing, obviously, is you're going to basically be using it to either stream some services, you have WhatsApp now for text messaging and so on, and all of those are going to work great. But keep in mind, LTE connectivity does drain battery a lot faster. Having always on display will also do the same thing. And it's essentially just the main concept of the more things that are on, the more battery draw there is. It's there for that. The battery is going to last you a minimum of a day and a half with those services turned on. But the concern though is that you just need to be aware of that that if you want to get the longest battery life if you turn on the always on display and if you turn off the wife uh, the lte uh, radio unless you need it for the most part the battery will last you much longer almost up to three days even a little bit more if you want to push it the charging is actually pretty decent and very fast you can charge it straight from your phone or directly with the charger that's included so in case you're traveling and you forget it as long as you have your samsung device it works Unfortunately, it doesn't work with other devices, like if you're using it with a Pixel or anything else. It, it, somehow the reverse wireless charging for this watch only works on Samsung devices, so something to keep in mind. I like the watch. I like the functionalities that we get in there. The battery life is definitely very nice. The improvements that we've seen over the years are definitely very good. Um, I think as far as running Wear OS 4, is one of the first watches to have it. Again, best of Google, best of Samsung type of a solution. And what I like about it is a lot of the features that we have in here are still gonna carry over with the 5 Pro. We don't have a 5, well, a 6 Pro for 2023 yet. More than likely that'll come back, will come out later. But for the Watch 6 and the Watch 6 Classic, both are gonna be featuring a lot of the same uh, configurations. Again, there are two different sizes on both, so you can pick the one that fits you the best. For me, I always go with the 47 millimeter because it typically looks just as, this is the best solution that I can get here overall. So. Would I recommend this watch over other ones on the market? I think the biggest differentiator as we start going into uh, Wear OS 3, 3.5, and 4, it's going to be access to the Google Assistant. Right now, for the most part, the, uh, the first Pixel watch that we saw last year, and of course, what we've seen with Samsung last year and this year, are going to be mostly the main watches that have the Assistant built in. Now, this comes with Bixby, but it's easily going, you go into the settings, you change the button configuration, and you're able to assign it to the Google Assistant, and it pairs to your smartphone. Again, it matches the Assistant service, but that's gonna be one of the main differentiators. It's powerful, it has a long battery life, it has a lot of features, and it does have the built-in Assistant. So functional things like uh, automation and different things that you want to use are going to be very easy. You can say the command word, the watch listens, answers you right away. Notifications are really nice. I, again, I like the, I, I call it the crown, but again, they're calling it more of a, like a dial. You could basically just, seriously, you, you can always just sit here and it has a little bit of a, um, a feedback, almost like you feel the turns as you're turning it. So you know exactly where you are. It's very precise. So I would recommend this to anybody looking for a, a connected option to help you look I'll say less at your device. I'm not saying we're going to disregard the phone, but when you're getting messages, you want to know if this is something that you should pay attention to or not. A quick glance at the watch does the job and it allows us to dismiss the notification or answer the actual notification, the call or whichever. And what I like about it is for me, at least for my use case, whenever I'm at the office or I'm at home, I like to put my phone down and walk away. This allows me to be aware of what's going on on my phone. Even if I'm at home, I'm outside, I'm in Wi-Fi range or even Bluetooth range, the connected option will always work and of course gives us the flexibility of being able to respond. And again, if you have the forwarding service set up where calls get automatically forwarded from your phone to your watch, you can even answer phone calls from here and of course get everything done that you want on your device when you get back. Let me know in the comments below what do you guys think of the brand new Watch 6, specifically the classic one since that's the one I like, but also let me know if you like the other option or do you think that the Watch 5 Pro from last year is still one of the better options available. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and of course I'll see you in the next video.